that's a funny story because when I was around 10, I used to watch the Jacques Cousteau uh, TV shows and I fell in love with the oceans and with the water. And I decided that uh, as Jacques Cousteau, I would like to become an oceanographer too. And I did it eventually. And after that, I decided to study limnology in order to integrate the, the water, uh, the continental waters with the marine waters. And since then, I didn't stop studying and working with water. So I could say that was uh, Jacques Cousteau fault that I'm still here. <laughs> Well, studying in IAG Delft changed my life completely. Not only because um, I have uh, friends and a huge networking of uh, water professionals now uh, from my friends all around the world, but also it brought me different opportunities uh, in work. Uh, as soon as I graduated IAG, I got a first promotion and then a next one and then a third one and now I am working in the, in the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. So I think the way of studying water governance and uh, conflict resolutions at IAG Delft opened my mind in a way to map new opportunities and to be ready for different challenges that Brazil is facing right now. So I could say IAG was a, a very important step in my professional life and career. The, the main one, I would say, is the expertise that IAG have in different aspects of the, of the water uh, sector. Also, because IAG is uh, it's able to integrate these different aspects and help to find solutions uh, in the context of the countries that uh, the institution work with. So I think with capacity building, um, more people studying at IAG, um, and also from this network that IAG, um, and somehow it offers when we study there, when we have in touch with them, because with the climate change scenario right now, no one is sure about which is the best solution to cope with a specific problem. So the change of uh, expertise, experiences, and practice can also be very helpful to cope with these uh, uncertain scenarios that we have right now. The women are those who are dealing with the water and the, in their routine and uh, in a common basis uh, way, I may say. And also because a woman has this um, power to integrate different uh, things at the same time and more sensitivity to observe how people are reacting for uh, different situations. Uh, in this sense, I think we need to uh, bring more women for the water sector. Uh, moreover, I think we, we should care more for isonomy of, uh, of power and distribution of knowledge. So that's why also it's important to bring uh, women for the water sectors. So I think we would have a better uh, solutions and uh, propositions if you have more women from different ages and uh, social classes, uh, well, and colors to the stage, shaping solutions and uh, solving problems with us. I would say, go, go, go. <laughs> there are so many opportunities uh, all around the world uh, to study water and to know more about the water and to find people supporting those women who want to become a water professional. Uh, not always is easy, so I would say don't give up if you fail the first time, keep it going and uh, eventually you will find like a good networking of uh, women to support you. And there are also fellowships and other different types of support that you can get. So don't give up of your dreams, of your will, and uh, just keep going. Talk with a woman in the water sector as well. Know their stories that can be very inspiring. So just go. We need you in the arena. Come, please. <laughs>